Hello children, welcome back. Today we're going to do section two. We're going to talk about energy, producers, and consumers in the environment. By the end of this lesson you should know uh, these objectives and you should know all these key terms. All right, so just to start off talking about energies and producers and consumers, uh, we're just going to step back and actually talk about our chemistry chapter for a second and think about energy. All right, so when we talk about ecology, um, right, we talk about organisms interacting with their environment, interacting with each other. Basically, every interaction comes down to an organism needing energy, whether it's from another, another organism um, or from something else in the environment. Okay, so every interaction comes back to needing energy for survival. And for us to remember back from chemistry, right, is that energy is always found in the chemical bonds, all right? And this will really be important as we start to talk about photosynthesis. Um, but, right, energy is stored in bonds. When we break a bond, we release energy. Uh, so plants do photosynthesis. They get energy from the sun, okay? And they make this energy into our favorite glucose molecule or sugar, um, where all that energy from the sun, right, over here, is now stored in the bonds of a glucose molecule. So just remember that as we move forward, right, that all interactions deal with energy, and it's because an organism needs energy. And when an organism needs energy, they're getting that energy from a chemical bond. All right, so the first level of energy we're going to talk about is called primary producers. All right, and they're called producers because they're going to make or produce energy. Okay, so certain organisms can capture energy from the sun or they can get energy from chemicals found on Earth can and can convert it into energy that all living things can use. All right, there's a couple things that can do this that are primary producers. The first one is plants, right? So plants are our first primary producer. Uh, we can eat tomatoes, right? We can eat grass, we can eat wheat. These plants do a process called photosynthesis where they take energy from the sun and, like we said, convert it into sugars. Um, other things that are primary producers that maybe you didn't think about would be like algae. Okay, now algae uh, are little tiny cells that live in the water, okay, and they take energy from the sun and they too do photosynthesis and create uh, usable energy. And the third thing that does uh, is a primary producer is bacteria, okay? Bacteria can both do photosynthesis, so they can take energy from the sun, and they can also do energy from chemicals. So it's important for us to ask and to know, how do they get this energy, okay, to produce usable energy for other organisms? Okay, so how do autotrophs create energy? Um, and first one is from the sun, okay? And this process, like we said, is called photo synthesis all right so plants and algae and some bacteria can do photosynthesis where they take sun energy or photo right and they make synthesis um, useful sugar energy from that sun the second way we could do it is from chemicals okay and this is called chemosynthesis okay now the prefix chemo refers to chemicals all right so we're taking energy from chemicals and making energy from the sun. So you may not have ever seen these before, but these are um, deep sea vents. So this is like miles under the ocean. There's hot sulfuric acid, hot sulfur, and other chemicals that are coming out of the earth. All right, and these chemicals have a lot of energy. And miles under the ocean, there is no light. So plants or bacteria or algae can't do photosynthesis. So they do chemosynthesis. They take energy from all this black sulfur and they do a chemical process to make usable energy, all right? And from bacteria, then we see all these little worms, crabs, fish. We have a whole ecosystem down below, uh, miles under the ocean by deep sea vents, that thrive on this chemosynthesis or chemical energy, okay? And like we said, all the organisms that produce their own energy are called autotrophs. So anything that does photosynthesis and chemosynthesis are called autotrophs. All right, so now that we've talked about producers and how we take energy from non-living sources and make usable energy, um, we're going to talk about all the other organisms that use the energy from primary producers or autotrophs. And anything that uses energy from another organism is a consumer, okay? Um, so consumers are organisms that rely on other organisms for energy and nutrients, right? And, of course, my favorite movie, Finding Nemo, 
we must remember that fish are friends, not food. Okay, so a consumer like Bruce here is anything that's going to eat another organism or energy from another organism to get energy and nutrients. Okay, um, and another fancy word for this is called heterotrophs. Okay, so autotrophs, we said, were producers that made their own food. Heterotrophs are anything that must eat another organism um, or its energy to make energy and nutrients. All right, so besides Bruce here, we have this little squirrel, his little chubby cheeks, uh, eating all this corn. Okay, he's a heterotroph because he's eating another living thing. He's eating corn. And we have this grizzly bear here uh, who ate this giant salmon. Okay, again, eating another organism uh, for energy and nutrients. A heterotroph or a consumer. Uh, and we have many different types of consumers. All right, the first one we have is carnivores. Okay, and carnivores eat meat. Just like this alligator down here, and you may not know what this is, but just like these giant river otters, okay? These guys are called giant river otters. Uh, both these animals are car carnivores. They only eat meat, okay? Uh, the next type we have is a scavenger, okay? So a scavenger would be like a vulture, um, or we could even have a hyena or something like that, right? A scavenger doesn't go out and hunt on their own, okay? They just go around and scavenge and pick up scraps, usually from uh, carnivores like this guy from an alligator or from a giant river otter. So carnivores hunt, scavengers scavenge. And the next one we have is a decomposers. Okay, so decomposers are consumers or heterotrophs, uh, which break down things that are usually dead, okay, other living organisms. And a perfect example of this is a mushroom, all right? So mushrooms are not plants. They don't do photosynthesis but they grow on things that are breaking down and they use the nutrients out of a dead animal or a dead plant uh, to grow and to live. The next one is an herbivore. Okay, so an herbivore is anything that eats plants. Okay, so a perfect example would be this cute and cuddly koala bear. Okay, koala bears only eat plants. They don't eat meat. And when they're not eating plants, they take naps in trees. Very cute. Uh, the next one is an omnivore, okay? So omnivores are things that eat both plants and meat, okay? So a per example would be like a bear, like this black bear here, right? If he's hungry, maybe he'll eat some chicken wings for dinner or go hunt a chicken or something. Um, so they will eat meat, but they'll also eat a lot of plants, grass, berries, fruits, nuts, things like that. So an omnivore eats both plants and animals. All right, and the last living type of consumer we're going to talk about is a detritivore, okay? Now, a detritivore is kind of similar to a decomposer where they eat things that are dying or dead uh, and kind of break them down. And a perfect example of this is an earthworm, right? An earthworm just kind of travels through the ground, chews on dirt, um, breaks down it into, into smaller pieces, and it's going to absorb basically any nutrients uh, or energy materials that are floating around in the dirt. Okay, so detritivores, again, are breaking things down into smaller pieces and absorbing. Think about earthworms when you think about those. All right, so that's the end of this lesson. So go back and review if you're not sure of anything. Make sure you know all the key terms and the objectives. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Or you can also tweet at me, at MrToad13. All right, kids, see you later. Have a good one. Bye.